happy is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. We honor you, Lord. We praise you, Lord God. We give you glory, God. You're everything we need, God, and more. We bless you, Lord God, for the victory in Christ Jesus. You are faithful, Lord God, to keep us from falling through the faultless of brings your glory, see and your joy. We honor you, Lord God. We give you praise, God, for the victory in Christ Jesus. You are great, God. There's no one like you in all the earth, oh God. All the earth shall worship you. Sing praises to thy name, O Most High. Hallelujah. We praise you, Lord God. We give you glory. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. We give you glory. We worship you, Jesus. We praise you, Lord God. Hallelujah. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I pray that you had a wonderful day and a peaceful day and a drama-free day that you are standing firm in faith in Jesus Christ. We're living in perilous times where men have fallen away from the faith. Many people are giving in to the seducing spirits and witchcraft and being controlled by the enemy and not allowing themselves to be subjected to the power of the Word of God. Today we just stand on Word of God in faith believing that he's faithful to keep us secure in his presence. For truly, this is the day the Lord has made. When you think about the Lord made this day for you, you think about how he orchestrates your day and he keeps you in his will, his plan, his purpose for your life. Doesn't matter what you're going through on today, no weapon formed against you is going to prosper. And every time that rise against you in judgment, thou shalt condemn. The word tells us, for we got to stand fast in liberty Christ made us free because we know that many people are being victimized by the enemy on today and, and yet God is still in control. He's in control of all of our lives and we thank the Lord every day for his goodness and his mercy towards us. Amen. So I pray that you're ready to receive the word of God tonight. So many times we find ourselves faced with different oppositions in life and some people don't know how to deal with the issues that they're dealing with on a daily basis but I come to encourage you tonight that you are more than a conqueror Jesus Christ our Lord more than a conqueror the word tells us and when you know that you've been made more than a conqueror once you have conquered different things in your life you have more victory and power to overcome any other thing that comes your way as you stand fast in the liberty of Jesus Christ. So let's go into a word of prayer. We're going to get into our lesson tonight. Gracious God, our Father, Lord, I thank you and I praise you for this opportunity to share your word today, O oh God. I pray that this word would inspire, would edify, would build up your people in their faith to trust you, Lord God. Many people are dealing with afflictions. Some are dealing, Father God, with mental, physical, emotional issues, Lord, tonight. Some are dealing with grief and sorrow of heart due to the loss of loved ones. And Father, I just come tonight lifting up my daughter's family, her mom, her family, Lord God, if they have lost a loved one. The, uh, Father, my friend Charlene has lost a loved one, her family, Father God. We, you just come, Father, actually to just bless every family, Lord God, that's dealing with sorrow in this hour, Lord God, due to the passing of someone who was close to them, Lord God. We pray that you comfort their broken hearts and bind their wounds. You said your word, Father God. You're near us when we call upon your faith and you will ask us, God, 
and show, show us great and mighty things we have not known of God. Tonight, have your God-like way, O oh God. Forgive us for our sins, God, known and unknown. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so you would be magnified in the midst of God tonight. Help us to stand fast in the liberty of Christ made us free. For we know, Lord God, that this is the confidence we have in you. We'll be asking your name that you will hear and answer us. And have your godly way in our lives. Now, thank you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen again. Amen. You know, a couple of weeks ago, we left off talking about how the spirit of the enemy uses Delilah, not Delilah, but Athalia, to steal the destiny of our children. And it's very important to realize that our children are faced with many oppositions on today because of the sinfulness of the world. We have to cover our children with the word of God. We have to cover them with God's presence, knowing that he's faithful to keep them secure in his presence. When, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the word says, God will lift a standard against them. And we got to know the word of God for ourselves. Study the word of God. Get the word in your spirit. Allow the word of God to be a guide unto your pathway every day and lamp to your feet as the word declares. Because we need to know how to pray for our children. Because our children are dealing with so many different emotional issues of life. And if we don't know how to handle it, we never know how to cover them. In the scripture, my key scripture tonight, I'm going to use Deuteronomy chapter 7. I'm going to start at verse 6. Deuteronomy chapter, Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse, beginning verse 6. I'm going to pull up the lesson on the screen in just a moment. There we go. Amen. So our lesson will be on the screen in just a moment. Put this up. But before I get into the lesson, I'm going to read Deuteronomy chapter, chapter 7, beginning verse 6 through 9. I'm going to read that. Just one moment. And it reads as following. For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. Above all the peoples that are upon the face of the earth. Verse 7. The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor chose you or choose you because you were more in number than any people. For you were the fewest of all people. Verse 8. But because the Lord loved you, because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, hath the Lord brought you out, of, out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen, and from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Verse 9. Know therefore the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, who keep his covenant and mercy with them that love him, and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. Verse 10. And he repented them that hate him to their face, to destroy them. He would not be slack to him that hateth him. He will repay him to his faith. His faith. Verse 11. Thou shalt keep, therefore keep the commandments and the statutes and the judgments which I have commanded this day to do them. Amen. So, let's get into our lesson tonight. Give me one second here. We'll put this up on the screen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. We praise your name, God. Amen. So as we talked about previously, how the spirit Athalia, she targets the generations of children to cut off the bloodline, to keep them from being who God has deemed them to be in their lives. We have to pray every day. We have to teach our children the word of the Lord. We have to instill them in their hearts the word to teach them how to pray for themselves and even how to believe and have faith in God. 
most of all receive salvation it's up to you as a parent to be the guide to your children to teach them how to get into the word of God and how to know how to pray and to get into God's word for themselves if you don't get into the word of God and teach your children the word of God how are they going to learn about the word of God some may go to church some may not but it's up to you to be that instructor and that guide in their lives to lead them into the path that God has chosen for them to walk in. Amen. We're living in a time where we have to know the word of God for ourselves. First of all, it says standing in the faith for your generations. Standing in the faith for your generations. Out of the tribe of Judah came a power greater than Athaliah. His name is Jesus, the Lion of Judah. There is no demonic force or power that's greater than the name of Jesus. It's up to you to realize that Jesus is Lord, He's the Savior, He's the conquering King, He's the Redeemer, He's our Sanctifier who dwells in our hearts. When you come to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life, you accept all that He is in the God here inside of you. So the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit dwells in you because of the Spirit of God that's in Christ Jesus as the Lord and Savior now lives in you. You can't separate the three because they're three in one. He is releasing a mighty roar over our generations. When Jesus roars, it means he's speaking the word against demonic forces that comes against your family. And you have to know within yourself how important it is to allow the Spirit of God to bring you to an understanding of the Word of God and know how to walk in that Word. If you don't get into the Word of God for yourself, how do you expect your children to come to know the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ without the guidance of the Holy Spirit that's in you? If you want some trying to set up this uh, Google Meet in case someone want to join in tonight, I, I am doing this as well, Google Meet. But we'll see what happens. So, we have to learn how to recognize the spirit of the enemy and know who's the Lord over your life. Many people are victimized by the enemy by choice. What I mean by that is if you choose not to serve the Lord Jesus Christ, you choose not to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life, you choose death and destruction as a guide in your life when you refuse to accept Jesus Christ. Does that make sense? You accept death. You accept the choices of the enemy to control and manipulate your life in a pathway of destruction. He is releasing a mighty roar over our generations. That roar comes when Jesus speaks the word of God into your life. That word has the power to silence the voice of the enemy and stop his negative influences from impacting your children and your children's generation. He is our covenant. He is our covenant. And we must, we must, it's, it's a guarantee, something you have to do. We must begin to pray in faith. Believing that our generations will fulfill the plan of God for their lives. Where's your faith tonight? Where's your faith? Do you got faith in God's ability and power to save your children, to keep them from getting to a path of destruction, keep them from being killed prematurely? Is your faith in the promises of God's word or is your faith in the negative things of life? There's so many different reasons to doubt God in today's society. And you hear it all the time in the news media, you see it in society. But it's up to you to make a decisive decision that in spite of things that's going on around me, I am going to continue to allow my faith to be anchored in Jesus Christ. One thing about God, God is so merciful and loving and kind-hearted towards us as children. Even if you make a mistake, as a child of God, you're going to sin. This is part of life. There's no way around it. 
We can try to practice righteousness every day. We can try to practice holiness every day. But because of the sinful nature who is not always subjected to Jesus Christ's lordship and authority, we're going to sin in this life. But thank God for Jesus. Because the word says we have a great high priest who forever liveth in a body to make intercession for us when we sin. So just because you make a mistake, don't condemn yourself. Don't judge yourself to where you feel like it's over. It's no use of serving God. I done messed up. I made a mistake. So God's going to give me the fatal blow. He's going to destroy my life because I messed up. That's a lie from the devil. If you got faith in God's word, it tells us that if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in our heart that God raised from the dead, thou should be saved. So salvation didn't come from you. It came from faith. For by grace are you saved through faith and that not yourselves. It's a gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. So if I receive salvation through Jesus Christ, just because I might fall, doesn't mean I'm, I'm going to be continue a victim to stay in the same condition of the mindset of sin. It's up to you to allow the repentance in your heart to repent of your sinful ways and allow the blood of Jesus to cleanse from all sin. The word tells us, let us draw into God with hearts for the faith, being washed clean from an evil conscience and being sprinkled with clean water. So the water of the Holy Spirit has the power to cleanse you from all sin. But it's up to you to make a decision. I'm going to have faith in what God has done for me on the cross. I'm no longer going to be victimized by the voice of the enemy, be condemned to death because of what the devil has told me as a lie and receiving his lies. I rebuke the devil off my life, rebuke him off my mindset, rebuke him off my heart, and I receive the word of God with power and authority that has cleansed me from all sin and set me free. So it's up to you to make a decision. I have a Savior who is greater than my downfalls and my shortcomings. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. It's all part of life that you're going to sin and fall short of God's glory. But thank God, if we confess our sins, He is faithful. He's just to forgive us all our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But it's up to you every day to present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reason, most reasonable service. In other words, you have to make a choice just because I may, may sin, may fall, may, may, may make a mess up, doesn't matter what I do, I got the blood of Jesus that cleansed me from all sin. So I can come to God just as I am and leave changed. I never known a person to come to Jesus Christ and leave Jesus Christ's presence and stay in the same way they were before they came to Christ. You come to Christ, you lead with him. Because he leads, he guides and directs you. Our children's generation, we have to teach them how the Lord leads, guides, and directs them is through his word. Man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. It's your choice to choose the word of God and live. If you continue, keep speaking doubt, fear, and unbelief, and negative things about yourself, about your children, about your generation, the result's going to be destruction. And that leads to death. In His Word, as God has a plan to fulfill in our lives, our children's lives, and that generation after them, God promised, number one, to be our deliverer, even to our generations. That's a promise. He told the children of Israel, if you hearken to obey the voice of the Lord, the Lord your God and His covenant, His commands, you're going to live. 
But if you continue to walk in rebellion and deny who he is, you're going to die. God told Joshua, when Moses died, that you're going to lead the children of Israel to the promised land. But you got to do one thing. Meditate on the word of God day and night. Keep it in your heart. Keep it in your mouth. Don't let it depart from you. The word will cause you to prosper and have good success everywhere you go. It's a choice. You have to choose that I want to live and not die. I want to continue to walk in God's promises of his word and be governed and guided by the Holy Spirit. He said to Moses, This is my name forever. And this is my memorial to all generations. God also said that he would keep the oath which he had sworn to the, your fathers. Has brought, has the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you. He is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant to a thousand generations. Go to Exodus 3.15. Go to Exodus 3.15. I'm going to read this right quick. Exodus 3.15. And it says, And God said, Moreover unto Moses, Thus shall thou say to the children of Israel, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has sent me unto you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. You know what God's name was? The verse before that, it tells you. In verse 14. So it says, And God said to Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, I am has sent me unto you. Isn't that wonderful that I am is with you everywhere you go? That I am has not turned its back on you. That I am is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord God who provides. That I am is sovereign and holy. That I am is Jehovah Nisi, your banner of victory. That I am is the good shepherd, the Lord of glory, the Lord of hosts. That I am is Jehovah God. El Shaddai who's more than enough so he has more than enough provisions for you and for I when we trust and have faith in who he is and what he is to us the great I am that's good that's really good number two we and our descendants can choose life Look at Psalms 89. Let me go to Psalms 89. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. Psalms 89, verse 1 through 4. It says, I will sing of the Lord's mercies forever. With my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness to all generations. For I have said, mercy shall be built up forever. Thy faithfulness shall thou establish in the very heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen. I have sworn to David my servant. Thy seed will, establish, will I establish forever. And build up thy throne to all generations. That's a promise. God promised David that his seed will be established forever. His throne will be to all generations. In other words, the Messiah, when he comes, will be the one reigning 
from generation to generation to generation forever. Amen. He said, I have set before you life and death. Choose life that you and your descendants may live. Deuteronomy 30, verse 19. Deuteronomy 30, verse 19. God says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessings and cursings. Therefore choose life, that both thou and thy seed may live. Verse 20. That thou mayest love the Lord thy God, and that thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou may cleave unto him, for he is thy life and the length of thy days, that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swore unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them another promise. God says, I call heaven and earth to record as a witness before you today. I said before you, life and death. But it's up to you to choose life. You're going to choose life or you're going to choose death. What do you choose today? What, are, what is your ambition? What is what's motivating? What's driving you? Look at Psalm 100. In verse 5, it says, For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. That is so powerful. Because when you get a revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ, the promises that came from generation, generation, generation to this very day in our lives. God never changed his mind about his word, never changed his mind about his covenant, but every promise he spoke, he has fulfilled. You have to believe it, you got to receive it by faith. What God has spoken to your life to manifest, it will surely come to pass as you trust in his word. Promise number three. God promised that our generations will always have a place in him and enjoy his covenant promises. God promises that our generations will always have a place in him and enjoy his covenant promises. The Lord said that he has been our dwelling place in all generations. Psalms 90 verse 1. Go to Psalm 90, verse 1. Glory to God. This is a really good lesson tonight. The Lord has been our dwelling place in all generations. Verse 2, before the mountain was brought forth, and ever thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Promise. So God promised us to be our deliverer, even our generations. Number two, we are descendants, can choose life. Number three, God promised that our generation will always have a place in him and enjoy his covenant promises. He stated, my righteousness will be forever. And my salvation from generation to generation. Isaiah chapter 51 verse 8. Do you see what, what is ours by birthright? The devil has no legal right to steal your seed. He cannot steal your promise. The only way the enemy can take your promise. If you don't know what the promises are for yourself. You got to get in the word of God. Read God's word, study God's word, meditate on the word, get the word in your spirit, and watch the word of God manifest in you. 
to bring you to an insight of revelation to understand what God has spoken for you in your life, your children and your children's children and the generation after them to protect the bloodline, to keep the children pure before his presence as they learn who he is, receive him in their lives, allow him to orchestrate their pathway and keep them in his truth and righteousness. So prayer for the generations. We're at the end of chapter 5. Prayer for generations. Let's pray for our generations. I encourage you to, follow, to pray the following prayer with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I stand upon your word, which declares that you will be our dwelling place from, for my generations. I decree that my generations will know you, serve you, and dwell in your house forever. You have said that your righteousness will be forever and that your salvation will endure from generation to generation. I decree that my generation will be righteous and will find their salvation in you. I ask you, Lord, to send laborers forth for the salvation of my seed. I pray specifically for the salvation of the names of my children, name of those in your generation who need salvation. I stand firmly upon my covenant promise from you in Jesus' name. I believe your word, which states in Exodus chapter 3, verse 15, that your name is forever, that you are the God of my generational seed. Lord, you have declared that you are the great I am, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You sent Moses to deliver Israel from the hand of Pharaoh. You have stated that you would be known throughout the generations of our God and deliverers. I pray now for my generations. I pray, Father God, that we take time to name the ones in our generations who need specific prayer. I believe, according to your word, that you will deliver them the destructive plan of the enemy. From the destructive plan of the enemy. I stand upon your word, believing that you are not a God who lies, but one who fulfills what you promise. You are the redeemer of my generations. In Jesus' name. Lord, your word says that you are good, that your truth and your mercy endures to all generations. I thank you that you will remember the covenant which you made to our generations and the generation of Abraham. I am Abraham's seed, spiritual Israel. I stand in faith believing that your mercy and your truth are extended to my generations. I know that you are a covenant God and that your word is, is sure concerning my descendants. I pray specific, specifically for the names of my children, Father God, and my children's children. I know that you show love and mercy, and I ask you to send ministry angels to minister life and truth to my generations. You have said that you will be faithful to generations. I trust you, Lord, and I trust your covenant promises to me. In Jesus' name, amen. No sin. Is so great that God cannot forgive it. No river so deep that he will not find us and save us from it. He is concerned for each of us and for our generations to come. His mercy endures forever. His mercy endures forever. So as we move forward in the next chapter it would be more specific prayer strategies to dethrone Jezebel after Leah and remove them and their evil influences from you and your generations. So we're going to chapter 6, praying against the demonic powers of Jezebel and after Leah. Praying against the demonic powers of Jezebel and after Leah. Amen. So I pray this lesson has given you some insight and encouragement tonight. 
that you stand on the word of truth, knowing that God has delivered, God has set you free, has brought you out of bondage into mama's life, you and your descendants will live. Because it's very important as a child of God to get the word in your heart, to cherish that word, because the enemy knows if he can take the word of God from you, he can take the anointing. He's after your anointing. He doesn't want you to operate in the anointing. That, that's the whole reason why the enemy attacks you so hard. Because he knows if I can get you in a place of darkness, I can keep you from walking in the word of God. He doesn't want you to be empowered in the way of truth and righteousness. He wants you to continue to give in to the mind and force of the enemy and be in bondage to the enemy. But you have to make a decision in yourself that I would not be victimized by the enemy. I'm going to stand on the word of truth. I'm going to walk in righteousness. I know what God has spoken to me. And I'm going to stand on that word. Regardless of what it looks like. How it feels. What comes my way. So next week. I'm not going to get into chapter 6 now. We'll start that next week. The Lord said the same. But I pray that you got this book. You don't got this book. Get this book. Get this book. It's very important. It's a very good tool to add to your library. Because the enemy, he knows I can keep you from studying God's word. I can keep you from receiving the word of truth. He, he doesn't want you to know the word of God. He doesn't want you to be free. He wants you to stay in bondage. But God wants you to be free. And the only way to be free is to get the word in your spirit. Breaking the threefold demonic cord. There are threefold demonic cords we've been talking about for the last few months. Jezebel, Athelia, and Delilah. These are three, threefold demonic cords that band together in wickedness that has a mind-binding spirit to control your life. So it's up to you to make a decision in yourself. I will not be hindered. I will not be bound. I will not be stuck in darkness, but I'm going to stand on the word of truth knowing that God has liberated. He has set me free. Amen. So, Father, tonight I thank you for this word. God, I pray that it has blessed somebody, God, who those that have ears to hear what the Spirit says to the church. It will bring conviction to their hearts and give them an attitude to learn how to examine their hearts, to know what's not right in their hearts and in their children's lives, to be an example of how to live for the Lord, Father, God, every day of their life. Teach them the word of God. Teach them how to surrender to his lordship and authority. Teach them how to repent, Father God. And, and let go of the strongholds and issues in their lives that keep them in bondage, keep them in the pathway of destruction, and bring them to the path of light, righteousness and truth. And said, You, Father, forgive us for our sins, known and unknown, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Stay encouraged in the word, stay encouraged in your walk with the Lord. No matter what challenge come your way, stand fast in the liberty of Christ made you free, knowing that this is the confidence. We have him. What we ask in his name that he would do. God promises to deliver and set you free from the strongholds, from the snare of the enemy, and from noise and pestilence that come against you. Because he has conquered all your foes and he gave you, you and me, the victory. Amen. Be enriched in your spirit and stay encouraged. The next time, the Lord the same. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord turn his face towards you. May the Lord lift his counsel upon you. May the Lord give you peace. Until next week, the Lord bless you. Have a good night. Shalom.